There are a lot of avatar items on Roblox that are pretty well known for not having a lot of owners, making them extremely valuable and flexworthy. For some items, owning them is like being in an exclusive club that only a few people have access to. In fact, some items are so like this that they even have their own Discord servers exclusively for people that own them. And most of the time, people immediately recognize this flexing. If you spawn into a game wearing a Dominus and Pyreus, for example, people are going to take notice of that. You might even get a few people who approach you asking for free Robux or Limiteds. But what if I told you that there are dozens of even rarer hats than Empyreus out there that most people probably wouldn't even bat an eye at if they saw you wearing them. In fact, the hats I'm going to show you today are so unknown that some of them have never even been mentioned in the Rollamon's Discord server, which has members that, until now, I thought knew of every rare item under the sun. All of them have less than 10 owners, making them more valuable than even some of the most expensive limited items out there, and yet no one knows their names. These are the rarest Roblox accessories that no one knows about. We're going to be starting off moderately well known and then working our way down from there, so fair warning, you may recognize a couple of these items at the start, but I can guarantee that by the time we end, you'll be seeing stuff you've never heard of before. Many of you probably remember the Ready Player One event back in 2018, a massively complex scavenger hunt event similar to RB Battles Season 2 that ended up awarding its first winner, who may or may not have deserved it, a one-of-a-kind Dominus rematch called the Dominus Venari. But a lot of you probably either don't know or don't remember that this hat actually had a retexture of itself published. The Dominus Claves. It's a silver version of the Dominus Venari that was given out to the developers of all the games that had something to do with the hunt. Only Bad CC, Asimo 3089, Lido Zinnemon, Shayland 007, Axis Angle, Biostream, Build Thomas, and Sigum underscore ND own this thing. And surprisingly, just like with a lot of the items on this list, none of them are currently wearing it. Speaking of retextures, let's talk about the Black Iron Crown of Ponage. It was introduced in 2007, and over the years, it's been given out to 13 different people for various reasons. Its first owner, Poker God received it for getting 10,000 kills across all Roblox games, while others have received it for doing everything from reporting bugs and exploits to simply being a Roblox admin. Five of these owners are known to be terminated though, so there are only eight copies left at most. It's not only cool because of its rarity, but also because it's one of the few Roblox hats to contain a script inside it. All it does is print Hello John to the developer console and use a service that's been deprecated since 2017 to try and remove your ability to scale, move, and rotate parts when playtesting in studio, but it's still an interesting easter egg. It also used to contain a script that would give Roblox Administrator Phil a 1000% chance of being the murderer in Murder Mystery 2 for around an hour if he ever joined the game wearing this hat, but that was removed at some point in 2021. Another item you could get for reporting bugs and exploits was the Boss White Hat. Now this hat has well over 10 owners, so you're probably thinking it doesn't belong on this list, and you'd be right about that. It's retextures on the other hand. The binary Boss White Hat was awarded to users who reported 5 or more serious bugs or exploits to Roblox, and it only has 3 owners, Einstein K, Saranok, and Moda. The blue banded, purple banded, my personal favorite, and gold sparkle time banded retextures, which were awarded for reporting 3, 4, and 6 bugs respectively, all have only one owner, and that's Moded, who despite his insane horde of boss white hats, is currently pulling a power move and not wearing any of them. Something extra cool about these hats is that they all contain sparkles. Even though that's slowly becoming less and less flex worthy because of a certain dessert themed hat that shall remain nameless, these hats are still one of the only ones to use the default Roblox sparkles instead of a barely noticeable custom design, so I think they're still pretty cool. Now, I've purposefully avoided putting any limited hats on this list because if you're in the trading community, you'd probably recognize any rare limited I tried to put here, and I want this to be a list of items that no one recognizes. However, I did come up with one limited that you probably don't recognize even if you are in the trading community, and that's because it can't actually be traded. The orange trance face is a limited unique item, meaning that it was supposed to have a set amount of copies on release that would all be bought for the same price until it sold out, at which point it could be traded. However, this particular item glitched out on release, making it so that it didn't didn't have any copies and was unable to be bought or sold. At some point, there was some sort of vulnerability that allowed 4 people to purchase it for 25 Robux using scripts. Voiliax, Jacob610912, Jack4788, and Tariska, but since they don't have the ability to trade it, they are the only people who will ever own it. It's a shame that all of the rest of the trans faces have relatively low values, because it means that most people who have met these owners have probably assumed that their face is worth the same as the rest, when in reality, it's infinitely more valuable. Back to off-sale hats, let's talk about this thing the crown of the Dark Lord of SQL. If this hat seems familiar to you, it's probably because you're in the trading community and have seen this somewhat rare limited item, the Crown of Warlords. The Crown of the Dark Lord of SQL is a cool solid black retexture of this hat, and it was meant to be exclusively given to Roblox admin Noob007 for reasons that are currently unknown because Noob007 can't stay on topic. Shedletsky kept a copy for himself though, and it was also given to user Underworld Ruler for unknown reasons and to user Alex Valentino Crown, who completely and totally deserved to get it for all of his helpful bug and exploit reports 
work that he definitely never used himself for any shady purposes whatsoever. Both of those users were eventually terminated, though, leaving Shedletsky and Noob007 as the only remaining owners of this incredibly rare item. Before we get into the super obscure hats, we have one more thing to touch on, which I actually already talked about in my Kleos Apphiton video. Back in 2007, Roblox hosted a paintball tournament event that pitted several different teams of players against each other in several rounds of Mike's Ultimate Paintball, which was one of the most popular Roblox games out there at the time. At the end of the tournament, each member of the three teams who got the farthest in the bracket was awarded a Robux prize, but each member of the Super Mario Strikers team, who were first place, won a little something extra, a year-long Builders Club subscription and an exclusive hat called the Paintball Tournament Trophy. Unfortunately, over the years, some members of the Super Mario Strikers team have been terminated. Arthropoda, BLXHD, and Zanji were all terminated for unknown reasons, and Ape911 went inactive, got compromised, and became the main account of Alex Valentino Crown, who, again, never did anything that could possibly justify his eventual termination at all. So that actually leaves only one owner of this item that's still unterminated, Metal Mario, who by the looks of his avatar actually seems to still be decently active, so if you ever run into him in game, make sure to compliment him on his trophy hat. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. The next bit of this video is going to be a sort of lightning round review session, because the next 15 or so items on this list are gift card items. Let me explain. Roblox has been selling its gift cards to various different stores in various different countries and continents across the world since 2010, and as you might guess, a lot of stores have started carrying them and stopped carrying them and started carrying them again. Now, when a store decides to stop carrying Roblox gift cards for any amount of time, they'll usually still have a few cards left over after their last month carrying them, and they'll usually be sold the next month even though they're technically not on the list of participating stores anymore. However, since every gift card has to have a bonus avatar item that gets awarded to the user upon them redeeming the card, Roblox will continue to make avatar items that can only be redeemed with gift cards from that store until the store reports that they have no more gift cards, even though there's only like five of them. As a result, there have been several gift card items over the years that have been awarded anywhere from only 10 to literally zero times, simply because there were no cards to be bought at the store that you had to buy from to get that item. So without further ado, let's take a look at the rarest ones. The Toothy Pirate Hat was a Walgreens US gift card item in May of 2020, and it was redeemed nine times. It's very well modeled and textured, and the teeth on it are pretty cool looking, and it would probably probably make for an awesome pirate outfit, so I'll give it an 8 out of 10. The Too Cool Seagull is a shoulder pal that was awarded for buying a gift card from anywhere other than these stores in July of 2018. It was also redeemed 9 times, and I've gotta say, for a 2018 item, the model and texture are… what's the word… atrocious? Yeah, I think that's right. Every 3D model is made out of triangles, and the more detailed a model is, the more triangles it has, the smoother it looks. This is pointy as hell. It looks like I could cut myself on the top of its head. The feet are super undetailed, the wings, tail, and body are all just sort of melded together, and it's not even saved by the texture because that's grainy and undetailed as well. This would all be fine if it was a classic item from 2010, but no, this is from 2018. And when you compare it to many other items from 2018, it's pretty obvious that they could have done way better. 4 out of 10. This next one is actually a retexture of a decently popular small limited, the blue swag shades. In terms of looks, I don't really think it looks better or worse than its predecessor, but in terms of rarity, it definitely blows the blue swag shades out of the water and an astonishing 8 copies. It was obtained from 7-Eleven Canada in March of 2017, and again, it looks great, but I do have one small gripe with it the name. You'd probably assume, based on its predecessor, that it would be called Green Swag Shades, and you'd be almost right about that. The real name that this thing actually has in the spot where its name should be is, and I quote, 3-1-711-Green Swag Shades. So much detail, for no reason, and I've checked all over the catalog and I can't find any other item that's named this way. So item, 9 out of 10, and name, negative 5. The Surf's Up Surfboard is a back accessory that could be purchased from 7-Eleven Canada in June of 2017, and it has six copies. I personally think that the color scheme of the tail doesn't match with the color scheme of the body at all, but other than that, it's pretty alright. 7 out of 10. And now we're getting to the really rare ones, the sub-5 owners tier. The Leather Brim Summer Cap could be redeemed from Asda in July of 2019, and it has, no lie, just three owners. It actually looks pretty cool, and I like the aesthetic of it a lot, but I will have to deduct a point or two because whoever made this didn't bother to hollow out the inside, meaning that if this had existed in real life, it would wear something like this. 8 out of 10. 
Medium-sized bad wolf is one of the oldest hats on this list, hailing from the ancient year of 2015. It was available from FYE in September of that year, and it also has just three owners. And that's kind of a shame, because wow, what an intimidating hat. It has way too many teeth, and they all look sharp as daggers, and that combined with its unblinking green eyes lets you know that you're in for trouble if you don't run fast. It's not very stylish, but if you're looking to make some sort of werewolf outfit and are lucky enough to own this hat, it would look amazing. I have to take a point away because of its grainy texture, but 9 out of 10 overall. The pirate hip rapier came from Barnes & Noble bookstores in May of 2020, and it's another item with three owners. The texture and mesh are very detailed, and it goes great with the toothy pirate captain hat from earlier, which is a shame considering that the probability of someone owning both of these items is slim to non-existent. The only criticism I would probably give it is that the red strips of fabric tied to the handle should be hanging downward so that they don't defy the laws of physics. But other than that, 8 out of 10 for this one. Sword shades. They're shades with swords for handles. You could get them from 7-Eleven Canada in May of 2017, and they were only redeemed three times. The mesh looks a bit low effort, but the texture is on point. They wouldn't be fun to wear though, as they would probably slice your ears off. 6 out of 10. And now we come to the bright green plaid cap, which was redeemed from FYE gift cards purchased in June 2015, and has, and this is true, one owner. That's right, whoever redeemed this thing has a unique, one-of-a-kind hat on their hands. It's just a shame that it looks so generic and missable. In fact, it bears a striking resemblance to the free, verified, bonafide, platified hat that every Robloxian gets when they verify their email. And at a glance, it's very possible to confuse the two, so be sure to learn the differences so that you don't miss this hat if you ever somehow see it out in the wild. 7 out of 10. Believe it or not, FYE had another gift card item with only one owner called the Bright World Bandit, which was available in August of 2015. It's a retexture of the popular Desert World Bandit accessory, and I gotta say, I really like this one. Unlike the Too Cool Seagull, the low quality mesh and texture actually add to its classic vibes because it is a retexture of a classic hat. And although I don't like the blue bandana as much as the red one, I'm kind of biased obviously, I still think that this item is very cool. Now unlike the rest of the gift card items on this list, thanks to an old screenshot sent by Rollmod's Discord server member Weaboo Jones, we actually know for certain who the one person that redeemed this item is. It was apparently Roblox admin Action Shakespeare, who is somewhat known for having redeemed many rare gift card codes as well as this one, so it's no wonder that their inventory is private now. Anyway, this item gets a 10 from me. Nicely done. Next up is Wizards Familiar, a shoulder pal that could be redeemed from a Woolworths gift card in May of 2019. And believe it or not, this item was never redeemed. At all. No one owns this except the official Roblox account, which owns all of the items on this list, so I've been ignoring it up until now, and if you don't mind, I think I'll continue to do so. This item has no owners. Now honestly, even though it is incredibly rare, I don't think anyone's missing out by not owning this thing because it kinda sucks. The mesh and texture are nice and detailed, don't get me wrong, but it's sort of a do-nothing design. It doesn't draw the eye in any way, and its small size means it probably wouldn't be the focal point of the avatar even if it was owned by someone. There are certain magic magic hybrid monsters that are really cool, like griffins, centaurs, or even jackalopes. This is not one of them. 5 out of 10. The Royal Ball Cap is another item that was never redeemed by anyone. It was available at Walmart in May of 2017. Now this item actually looks pretty cool at first glance, and then you look harder at it and things start to quickly fall apart. These cylinder bits on the top of the crown aren't the same thickness as the rest of it, and the pointy bits that are visible behind and in front of them make it painfully obvious that they were just thrown on there at the last minute. They also didn't bother to cut out a head hole at the bottom, so we got that flat head problem again. And then there's the stitching. It's like they had it perfectly set up in Photoshop and then just went crazy and attacked it with the blur tool. I could count the pixels here on one hand. Plus, this button on the top isn't even aligned with the center of the stitching. Overall, although the concept isn't bad, it's just really poorly done. 4 out of 10. There's also the silver chain glasses, which could have been redeemed from Big W in July of 2016, and again, have no owners. These are actually pretty cool. I like the minimalist design, and I could see them being a part of a lot of different avatars. The only criticism I can think of is that the lenses could be a bit more detailed. Instead of modeling individual chain links, they just slapped a somewhat grainy texture on there, and it cuts parts of the links off due to its curviness, meaning that these things should probably be falling apart. Still though, they get a solid 8 out of 10. The big button in its hat also has no owners. It could have been redeemed from FYE in July of 2015, and it's kind of similar to the bright green plaid cap in that it's very generic and missable, which is a shame, but at least it looks pretty good. I'm just not sure why they chose to use this particular description considering that Roblox is supposed to be a kid's game, but it's not the worst thing that's ever been said on an item page. 8 out of 10. Rasta Star, another item with no owners, is the oldest accessory on this list. It could have been redeemed from London Drugs, which is surprisingly from Canada and not the UK, in 2014. Now I can't really speak on how accurate or good this hat looks, but I can talk about the quality of the texture, which for 2014 standards is surprisingly 
good. It's not really grainy at all, you can see each individual stitch in the Rasta part, and they even bothered to put a head hole on there. It looks surprisingly realistic, so based on that alone, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. Our final gift card item is Captain Goldhorn's hat, which could have been redeemed from Circle K in May of 2020, and has zero owners. If I had to choose between the Toothy Pirate hat from earlier and this one, I would definitely choose this one. Not just because it has less owners, but also because it's more impressive looking. I love the gold horns on the front, and I like the fact that they added a bit of grunge buildup onto the texture to make it look well worn. This would make for a very formidable pirate outfit. 10 out of 10. <laughs> If you're a frequent viewer of mine, you probably know what a building contest is by now, but for anyone who isn't, I'll give you a quick summary. Building contests were events where Roblox would tell players to build them a game based on a given theme within a relatively short period of time, usually just a few days. Once that time was up, players would be allowed to vote for which places they thought would get the highest rating, and Roblox would then give each submitted place a rating between 0 and 9,999. The builders of each submitted place would then win prizes in the form of avatar items based on what rating their place got, and people who didn't submit an entry could still win a prize if their voting accuracy a percentage based on how many highly rated places they voted for was above a certain percent. In Roblox's early days, a ton of these contests were held, and it was usually fairly easy to meet the rating requirements for the highest prize as long as you were a somewhat decent builder. However, for the earliest building contests, things were different. Because Roblox didn't have a lot of experience conducting these kinds of contests yet, they had no way to predict what score the average Robloxian would get other than trial and error. As a result, for a lot of these early contests, mostly ones from 2010, the score requirement for the top prize turned out to be borderline unattainable, and only a few people managed to get it. Nowadays, a lot of these kinds of prizes have either been put on sale for Robux or made limited, but there are a few that have just sat there rotting away in old inactive players' inventories for years, slowly disappearing due to random terminations. Take Racersaurus Rex, for example. It was awarded for getting a score of 1900 or higher in the Dusakar Raceway Building Contest, where players had to build a race car course for Roblox admin Matt Dusak. The texture isn't the best quality, but it's a 2010 hat, what do you expect? I actually really like the pattern they chose for this hat, though, and although this probably wasn't intentional, the way the light bounces off of these bright blue spikes at the top is very cool. But where this hat really shines is its rarity. Today, only seven owners of this hat remain unterminated. Gawain IV, Ike IV, Jedi Nika, Destuke, Rob498, Super Mario World 24, and the J-Kid. Now, for each of these building contest hats, I wanted to play a couple of the places that won the winners their item, but because of the rule that existed back in the day that non-builders club members can only have one place open at a time, and because a lot of older users tend to be embarrassed by their old places, most of them were unfortunately either private or overwritten with something else entirely. I was in luck for this contest though, because two winning places were actually still open, Super Mario World 24s and Dustukes. So let's see what it took to win this hat. A trip to the raceway. This is the original racetrack. This was made first. It was my first place and I made it public domain because I was newbie and didn't understand the game. So then a noob took it and said it was his. <laughs> Don't believe me? Check when this was made and then when the model was made. Please comment. 3, 2, 1, go. Welcome to Dusakar Speedway, where Roblox's most elite racers duke it out for free first place. Guess I'm gonna be an elite racer. Okay, it's looking pretty good so far. It looks like there's a lot of map to cover. And the fastest way to do that would be with a car. Let's try this one. It has a goose on it, I like that. Okay, this controls a little bit like a washing machine on wheels, but we're gonna have to roll with it. Pun very much intended. Keeps drifting to the side. I can't even get onto the track. Dang. Hang on. I know exactly what to do. Yep, I am a professional cyclist now, and I actually feel like this is kind of moving faster than that car was, so that's a bit concerning. I feel like I'm moving at incomprehensible speeds that no Robloxian should ever be moving at on a bicycle. And finish. Wanted to get in that tower there, but I guess I can't. Oh god, I'm in the clouds. I forgot how glitchy this bike is. Okay, let's see what's up here. Night and day buttons. Ooh, see if it works. And now it's night. All right, night and day buttons do work. These pit crew buses are on wheels, so I wonder if they can be moved. I don't think they can. All right, awesome edited Roblox NASCAR logo right there in the background. We got a bunch of racing helmets to choose from, but hey, why have just one when you can have them all? All right, let's check out our lineup of spooky pumpkins over here. Matt Dusek is first place, of course, except his pumpkin kind of looks like a zombie for some reason. And then the second and third place winners uh, are faceless, nameless puppets with no will of their own. Oh my goodness, that is a giant pumpkin. I did not expect that. 
Let's see if any of them do that also. I guess not. All right, cool place. Now let's check out Super Mario World 24s. Robloxia Raceway. Entry for the Dusakar Raceway Building Contest as the Matt Dusak Raceway, May 2010. Time to make some skid marks and speed your way to the finish line against the best racers in Robloxia. The Matt Dusak Raceway is the place to race as it has one of the best racetracks in Robloxia. Okay, this actually looks to be quite a bit more detailed than the other racetrack, but let's see if it proves to be less glitchy, because that's where the real importance is. Okay, we got some cars. They're in garages. I hope the garage fold-out mechanisms still work. That would be a shame if they didn't. Oh, and they do. All right, let's get into this green car here, and, uh... I don't think they position this car very well. I can't get out. I'm stuck. Help. All right, I'm out. Okay, let's try and complete a lap now. Uh, and I'm just realizing now that the steering on this is kind of bad. It steers like the WASD keys are glued down to my keyboard, and I can't really get it to do much of anything. But it does appear to be decently fast, like actually way faster than the cars from the other one. All right, let's pretend I need to make a pit stop. Try to get in my green area. Okay, I'm in. That was actually kind of smooth. But now let's pretend that the yellow car is in their pit stop and I have to get out of here without hitting it or else I'll go to jail. And I guess I'm arrested now. Okay, let's get back on the road. Pretty detailed bleachers. It's just a shame that there doesn't appear to be any people in them. Okay, the steering is really starting to fail on me. I can't really steer much at all. Come on, we can do it. We gotta complete the lap. Alright. Straight shot, straight shot, straight shot. And we have a winner. All right, nicely done. Let's check out what's in this tower here. I'm kind of curious. It appears to be a whole lot of nothing. Great. Wonder what those green bricks are down there. I think we're inside the bleachers now. And there's also nothing inside the bleachers. Yeah, yeah, real detailed. Ow! I think I just broke my ankles. Okay, now I want to see what's under that, like, ramp plexiglass thing. I actually tried earlier to jump off of it using one of the cars, but since it's raised up like that, uh, I couldn't get anywhere, but let, let's see what's inside it. I haven't checked that out yet. Super Mario World 24's personal car. Ooh, looks fancy. It's just a shame I can't get in there. ACB Panda's personal car. Soccer 299's personal car. Mario Man 1484's personal car. Seven Dragon Graves' personal car. Hmm. Okay, I don't think I can get into any of these because it looks like you need a key card for that. Uh, but maybe I can regenerate it from out here because the door is clear. Oh! Yep, <laughs> yeah, I definitely can. Oh yeah, things are starting to break now. I don't think I was supposed to do that. Yeah, we got some lag. Maybe I managed to get some stuff to spawn up top. Let's see if I can steal one of Seven Dragon Graves' cars that way. Oh yeah, we got some action over there. Yeah, there's a lot of cars. There's a lot of cars up at the top now. I just hope they're drivable because they look pretty well good and stuck. One of them is in the air. Okay, yeah, things are getting out of hand. As I get close to them, the lag is getting a lot more intense. Okay, let's let, let's see if we can even get into one of these. Ow. Yeah, not touching that one. Oh, hey, one of them is on the ground. Oh, okay. We, we're, we're on the road. Okay, we have stolen one of Seven Dragon Graves' personal cars. I can't believe it. Okay, Seven Dragon Graves, thank you for the free ride. See you later, sucker. I think we may be able to complete a lap with this thing actually despite how buggy it is eh the steering went the steering is kind of giving out on me again come on don't fail me now almost there all right come on 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 we have a winner all right i call that a win all right very nicely built place just uh maybe don't make me able to steal your cars next time these places were actually pretty darn impressive especially considering that they were built in roughly a week they were at least much more impressive than the winners of that summer building contest that i talked about in my book hats video but then again almost anything would be it's a shame how broken the cars are now but i would imagine that back when these games were 100 percent working they would have been very fun let's talk about another building contest item guitar star it was awarded for winning another administrator dedicated building contest roblo sam's rock and concert contest for this one, you had to receive a score of 1850 or above, which is 50 less than Racersaurus Rex's requirement. However, surprisingly, it actually has three less unterminated owners than Racersaurus, those being FR33T4K3R, Jedi Nika, Gawain IV, and TJW1234. It's meant to resemble the signature hairstyle and top hat of the guitarist Slash from the band Guns N' Roses, and although it does look kind of odd, I honestly don't really mind it. Unfortunately, none of its winners have their winning places open anymore, so all we have to go off of is this screenshot. Raffle indeed. 
Paper Pilgrim is a hat that could have been won by getting a score of 1700 or more in the Autumn Thankfulness Contest. It's pretty unassuming and kind of overshadowed by the dozen or so other Pilgrim hats on the catalog nowadays, but it's really nothing to sneeze at, because it only has four unterminated owners at most. Knopfside Hoover, 007360, and no are confirmed owners, and Brandon12320 most likely owns it. But since his inventory is private, we have no way of knowing for sure. As with Guitar Star, none of the winners have their original places open anymore, but judging by the several low-res thumbnails found on the contest's old leaders page, they seem like they would have been pretty fun. Our final building contest hat isn't actually a hat at all, it's a gear, called Pickaxe. Yes, that's right, a gear simply called Pickaxe is one of the rarest gears on the catalog. Now despite its unassuming name and appearance, its effect is actually pretty cool. It lets you turn your Roblox experience into a Minecraft world by mining any block you click with it out of existence. It's essentially the first ever incarnation of a delete tool, and anyone who spawns into a game with it in their inventory is guaranteed to wreak havoc with it. So it's a shame that it's so rare. It was a prize for getting a rating of 1600 or higher in the Mountain Adventure Building Contest, and it has only four unterminated owners. High Cup 789, Ice Tamper, Law King, and Xandor 22. Surprisingly, I was actually able to reach out to Ice Tamper and get him to reopen the game that won him the contest, so big thanks to him for doing that, but unfortunately it seems to have been taken over by the Matrix. Fortunately, though, High Cup 789's winning game is still very much open and themed appropriately, so let's check it out. Mounted Adventure Obstacle Course, winning entry. Thanks guys, I won. Very ambiguous, let's get into it. Okay, we are in a dirt cave. Doesn't look like a mountain, but maybe there's something outside? Oh, there is. Okay, thumbnail down there. Okay, let us get into the obstacling. <laughs> and some platforms. Dang. <gasps> Alright, I'm about to do something very illegal. Don't try this at home. Alright, and now let's get into this orange uh, peach flavored trusses. Some stone steps. Pretty easy obby so far, but I like that it has like kind of theming here, even though it's pretty minimalist. <laughs> Very long shoot that probably would have been much faster if I had just sat down instead of jumping up like an idiot. And next stage. This is gonna be a maze, isn't it? Well, I'll get back to you in five minutes because I'm very bad at mazes. <laughs> Alright, next stage. How there is lava in this giant grassy maze without everything burning to the ground, I don't know, but we're just gonna go along with it. Remember kids, if you touch lava with your toes, you'll instantly die. That's much better. All right, and now we are outside. Uh, I'd like to note that this hasn't really been a mountain. It's just been more of like a cave system, and I'm pretty sure most mountains don't have these weird twisty wooden stairs up at the top. So uh, what the heck, High Cup 789? But yeah, this is a pretty well thought out obby, actually. All right, now we are on to some guessing platforms, and I hope, yes, he has made them cheatable. Thank you, God. <laughs> Now we have a balance beam that's about as wide as my actual character, so it's not really a balance beam. I'd also like to note that I'm kind of floating in the void right now, which, uh, fun fact, most mountains don't do. And now we arrive at what appears to be a door guessing stage. And unfortunately, it looks like he did not make this cheatable, so I'm probably going to be dying a lot. Huh? Does the correct one move places? That's... that's scummy. Oh my god. I was lucky to make it out of there alive. More lava, except it's in a cave now, so there's no chance of everything burning down. And now we have some random pink floaty platforms for no reason whatsoever. Darkness. Very dark. Definitely not just black, semi-transparent rectangles placed all over the place. And now... We come to more lava. Oh god, it moves. The gray area moves. Alright, and that red square right there should teleport me to the winner's area. And we have a winner, and thank you for the badge. That's very nice of you. Okay, uh, it appears that the only winner tool we get is this bird. Let's see what it does. 
Uh, the bird does absolutely nothing. Okay, but overall, a uh, nice game actually. I really, I really did enjoy it. It's a lot more than you see from building contests usually, and I, I, I really liked it. Nice job. That's actually one of the best building contest games I've ever played. It has secret badges, it has extensive theming for 2010 standards, and its obstacles are very creative. It's one of the only building contest games I've ever played where you could tell me that it was just meant to be a standalone game, and it wasn't just for a building contest at all, and I would believe you. Very nicely done. If I haven't made this clear, every single one of the items I've shown you today has less than 10 owners, which again, is rarer than most of the highest value limited items on the catalog. Look at this outfit, then look at this outfit. In terms of rarity, the right is somehow more flex worthy than the left. It just goes to show you that on Roblox, looks really can be deceiving, and you can't really judge a person's experience or skill based on their avatar alone. And sure, that's probably a pretty obvious lesson that most of you already knew, but it's still one that I think most of us need to be reminded of once in a while. Anyway, that's about it. I've been Lord Nitrous, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.